So my research is on characterizing elements of the ST18 gene that have been associated with Alzheimer's disease. Um, so a quick background on Alzheimer's disease is Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that causes progressive loss of cognitive function and memory. And there's currently no cure or preventative treatment for Alzheimer's disease. So patients that get diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease have to suffer from neurological dysfunction and ultimately death. And Alzheimer's disease causes the, causes the brain to atrophy and the cells die, which leads to shrinking of the brain. As you can see here, this is a healthy brain, and this is a brain severe Alzheimer's disease. Many parts of, are shrinking. Um, and Alzheimer's disease accounts for the majority of dementia cases worldwide and affects 50 million people. And it's actually the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S., but it's the only, it's the only top 10 death that has no preventive treatment, cure, or any way it can be slowed down. In this situation, uh, Alzheimer's disease has a very complicated, not very well understood genetic etiology. And since environmental risk factors also play a part in development, it makes it hard to just focus on the genetics of it. But we currently know about 20 genes that are known to increase the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, and others are becoming known that relate to the onset of symptoms. And what I'll be looking at, the studies I looked at, is a genome wide association study which showed that, and when I talk about the SNPs, you can see it's a really long number. I'm just going to be referring to the last three numbers. So showed that SNP RS716 in the SC18 gene was significantly associated with the mean cortical thickness in Alzheimer's disease, parts of the brain. And a different GWASH study showed that the SNP RS219, also in SC18, was associated with cognitive decline. And an antisense RNA 15.1 in SC18 was shown to have increased expression in, late, in patients with late onset Alzheimer's disease. And just a quick background on so it's easier to understand my research. Um, exons are DNA sequences that code for amino acids and proteins, and they're expressed in protein synthesis. And introns are non-coding parts of RNA transcription DNA sequences that break up gene sequences between exons, which are removed during splicing when exons are joined together. So this is the original with the exons and the introns, but once they're transcribed, it's only the exons. The introns get left behind there. And Promoters show where the transcription of a gene, where RNA polymers start, and it just turns the gene on and off, and it shows the direction of transportation, and you can see it right here. And enhancers enhance transcription of the target gene, or they increase the chances that transcription of a target gene will occur when bound to specific proteins called transcription factors. And so SNPs, as Ruthie explained, are single nucleotide polymorphisms, and there are variations in single base pairs, so your genes are made of A, T, G, and C, and SNPs are just when one of those letters are changed, and there's about four to five million SNPs in someone's genome, with most genetic variation in, P in humans are due to these SNPs. And antisense RNAs are non-coding strands, which is complementary to a coding sequence of mRNA, which physically pair and bind to its complementary RNA, regulating gene expression for replication, transcription, translation by base pairing a sense RNA. So here is one, one of the antisense RNAs I looked at. It's in an intron, which goes this way, but you can see the antisense RNA goes the other way, and it's the, it basically codes, when, codes things when the intron itself doesn't, which is interesting. So my objective is to characterize the antisense RNAs and SNPs RS716 and RS219 and the ST18 gene in order to learn more about the relationship between the ST18 gene and Alzheimer's disease. So how I did this was I located the SNPs RS716 and RS219 on the ST18 gene using a USC genome browser, which I'll show you next. And I zoomed out to view the entire gene, and when I, that was when I saw the three antisense RNAs, one of which was very close to the RS219 SNP. And I gathered the expression information on these antisense RNAs and reviewed an EQTL analysis on the two previously mentioned SNPs. And also the, I reviewed this frequency data using DB SNPs to find the minor allele frequency. And I investigated enhancers located within the antisense 31.1. Um, so here's just a picture of the SD18 gene. It, its normal function is to code for a zinc figure transcription factor, which regulates the expression of myelination genes. And it runs from, most genes run from left to right, but this one runs right to left, like backward. 
and it consists of 26 exons, which are these lines over here, and 25 introns, which are just the spaces in between all the exons, like right here. And intron 2 takes up a big portion of it, like this whole thing right here, that's intron 2. And the RS7, the RS219, the antisense 31.1 are very close together, as you can see. Here's the SNP, and here's the antisense RNA. And here's the tissue profile for S18 gene as a whole. It's expressed almost exclusively in the brain, and most notably in the spinal cord and cerebellar hemisphere. So here are the frequency data for the SNPs that I'm investigating. So among various populations, for RS716, the SNP is present in about 25% of the population. And this was the SNP that was associated with, um, with the decline of mean cortical thickness in Alzheimer's disease. And also interestingly, it's, while it's only present in 25% of the general population, it's present in 65% of African populations. And Alzheimer's disease is slightly more common in African American individuals, I think like by like 3% more common than general population, so that's just a correlation. And, oh, and it, that's this one right here. And for the RS219, it's only, it's only in about 5% of the population, so it's five times less common than this one. And that's the SNP right here. So for the first antisense, this is the tissue profile for the antisense 15.2, and it's most highly expressed in areas of the brain, like the cerebrum, the cerebral hemisphere, and the spinal cord. So it looks a lot like just the overall SD18 expression as a whole, and that's that first antisense right here. And the second antisense gene, uh, the second antisense RNA, 15.2, it's only expressed in the testes, and its expression is much higher than any of the other two antisense RNAs. Um, that, that's that antisense RNA over here. And a paper from Humphreys that compares the expression levels of ST18 and the ST18 antisense RNA in late onset Alzheimer's disease patients and control groups. And it showed that is three times, that late onset Alzheimer's disease patients have three times the expression level of the antisense RNA 15.1 in the brain than with people in the control group. And this is very strange because it's only expressed in the testes, so you wouldn't expect Alzheimer's disease, which is a brain condition, to have this. So this leads us to believe that this antisense was somehow turned on in the brain, where it could have possibly caused a predisposition or a worsening of symptoms. And this last antisense RNA over here, this is the tissue profile. It's much different than the other two, whereas it's very spread out on different things, from the spleen, small intestines, blood, and spinal cord. And this is the, um, oh, sorry, the location of the second intron, and the numerous enhancers might impact expression for the main promoter, which can cause a predisposition for AD, for Alzheimer's disease, while possibly changing expression. And these regulatory elements present in the antisense, this red block is a promoter, the orange is an enhan and the orange and yellow are both different types of enhancers, which I explained. And the, this is where the SNP and the antisense are very close together, leading them to the SNP could possibly impact this antisense RNA. So the results from this is there are vastly different expression profiles for each antisense RNA, as you saw, was one only being in the brain, one only being in the testes, and the last one being in a variety of places from the spleen, small intestines, and spinal cord. But the overall expression of ST18 is only found in the brain, much like the first antisense we looked at. And the previous data shows that there's three times the level of the level of antisense RNA 15.1 in people with late onset Alzheimer's disease than in control groups. And once again, RS716 is five times more common than RS219 at 25% of the population versus 5% of the population. And the numerous enhancers present, and there are numerous enhancers present in the antisense RNA 31.1. And I did a Q EQTL analysis on the two SNPs. To determine if to determine if they caused altered expression levels in ST18, but they revealed nothing of significance. So, in conclusion, the SNPs RS716 and RS215219, and the alteration or change in expression of the antisense RNA in ST18 may cause a predisposition or worsening of symptoms of AD. 
And antisense RNA 15.1, which is once again only expressed in the testes, has high expression in the brain of late onset Alzheimer's disease patients, where it could have adverse effects since it's not supposed to be expressed there, but it is. So this can be things like, once again, worsening of symptoms or earlier onset. And the proximity of the SNP RS219 and the antisense RNA 31.1, this could allow the SNP to impact expression of the antisense. And the antisense RNA 31.1 located near the beginning of the gene and its numerous enhancers might allow it to loop back and impact the main ST18 promoter and alter expression since it's close to the beginning of the gene where these things are located. And intronic, ST, uh, intronic SNFs can also impact splicing, which would have implications on protein expression, but no, expression, no approaches were taken that would allow us to determine this. And the EQTL analysis allows to determine that the SNPs, both SNPs, did not significantly alter mRNA expression of the SC18 gene. And further investigation into the connection of SC18 and Alzheimer's disease is needed, but the connection has been made clear through numerous studies and the analysis I've done here today. And so, yeah, so I'd like to thank the, or the early college program and, of course, Dr. Dorada for helping me along the way a lot. And yeah, thank you. Oh. <laughs>